Now, one thing that's been causing a bit of confusion in this course is the timeline. What happens before what? And you know, has inflation finished before the microwave background starts? Where does this all fit in? So what I thought we'd do in the short video is basically just go through the timeline. So let's say you want to get straight what's happening before what else. What's the best way to do that? Well, I think we should just plot it out, you know? And this is sort of like the beginning of the Big Bang Theory, okay? The, okay. the opening credits. So, Big Bang down here. We're up here. And everything interesting has happened in between. So, for example, the first stars form. This is something I'm trying to figure out right now. When did the first stars form? We think a couple hundred million years after the Big Bang. But the Big Bang is what we're going to call zero. Yep. Then where I study galaxy formation, quasars, blobs and things, that's yeah, a fair chunk. That's uh, the first few billion years of the universe. The Milky Way forms somewhere in here. Earth yep. forms around here. Yeah, Earth, you know, uh, about 8 billion years after the Big Bang uh, formed, a little, maybe 7. Uh, and then, of course, the interesting thing here is that all the action on Earth that we're interested in, well, I mean, geez, even the dinosaurs are, like, right up there. Humanity is Yeah, Homo last. sapiens, yeah. <laughs> modern Homo sapiens is about 3 minutes to midnight. If you, if you treat this as an entire year, um, everything from the Big Bang up to the microwave backgrounds in the first 10 or 15 minutes or so, and all of human history is in the last few seconds. Right. Okay. So that's one way to look at it. Now, another way to look at it, if we really want to look at what's going on here, where I think some of the confusion is, is we use a log scale. So a log scale is where we go by factors of 10. Okay. So we map out each factor of 10 to an equal uh, spacing on this picture. So this enormously enlarges the very early times in the universe. Right. And so uh, particle physicists love this because it means that uh, uh, all the time they study is most of it in this graph. As you go back to the previous graph, things that we study is most of it. All the particle physicists are worried about the first pixel here. Yeah. So the particle physicists like at this graph where they're worried about all this, and we're just concerned about the last few pixels up there. Right. So we start up here today, 13.8 billion years after the Big Bang. Which is about 10 to the 17 seconds. Right. Then we go back 380,000 years after the Big Bang the formation of the cosmic microwave background. That's when the universe cooled to about 3,000 degrees, and so that the electrons suddenly were combined with their protons, and hydrogen recombined as we are and We'll combined. talk about that at great length later on in this right. course. That's right. Uh, then, sort of a few minutes after the Big Bang, we have nucleosynthesis. The entire universe was like the inside of a nuclear reactor or an H-bomb explosion at that time. The density and conditions were right for elements to fuse. Um, so we're talking maybe a bit more than 10 seconds there. When you go further back still, um, you've got particles, you've still got particles like uh, pr protons and neutrons and electrons in there. But when you go further and further back, they're all squashed so close together and they're so hot that they start dissolving into one another. Right. And so you just get loose quarks. So, so this is the era uh, of the universe where essentially the Large Hadron Collider is probing. So it's trying to create the conditions of this time of the universe in this part. Yes, yeah, so it's a quark gluon plasma or something like that, so it's just quarks. Um, when you go back here, we start seeing the effects of grand unification of the forces of nature. And so uh, here is where the, the weak force became distinct from the electromagnetic force. And that's something that can be probed in places like right. the Large Hadron Collider. So we kind of know what's going on there. That's fairly well understood physics. And now we're talking about you know, 10 to the minus that's 10 of a second. Right. But of course, on a long scale, that 10 to the minus 10 is stretched out almost infinitely, infinitely downwards. So you can still go a lot way further back. So we go back in time, and then we have this magical time, which we call the inflationary period. This yes, is when... just been talking about in the yeah. last few lectures. And that's somewhere a bit before 10 to the minus 30 of a second. Right. And so that's when we think that the universe between somewhere in here went from being essentially our part of the universe went from being the size of an atom to being the size of the entire universe we see now. Uh, quite a remarkable time. Didn't last very long. Probably 10 to the minus 35 to 10 to the minus 30 seconds. Although, truth be said, we don't really know how inflation started or anything. It's all mm -hmm. pretty, it's, it's more the ending of inflation that's important than when yeah. it begins. And then we can go further back still, because of course this is a log scale, you get 10 to the minus 40, 10 to the minus 50, 10 to the minus 60, 10 to the minus 100, 10 to the minus 1,000, 10 to the minus a million. It just keeps on going yep. into the, off the bottom of the stream infinitely far. But we've kind of got a limit here, 10 to the minus 40, which is called the Planck length. What's the Planck length? 
So the Planck length is essentially a uh, time or a length where the, the way gravity and quantum mechanics work together, we really don't understand how anything, everything sort of merges together. And the notion of physics as we know it just stops making sense. So I guess this is where we absolutely need a grand unified theory to go any further. And given we don't have a grand unified theory, this is where current physics knowledge stops. The universe still presumably existed before that, even if time is even meaningful back then, which we've no idea because yeah. we don't know what the laws of physics were back then. Yeah, and I think it's important to realize that as we go back here, things, our, our knowledge of physics becomes very, very poor. And so uh, there's the notion, uh, as we'll talk about, that maybe inflation happened forever which is an interesting question, in which case this time before this becomes kind of meaningless. Now, that's a speculative idea, uh, but it's not necessarily wrong. It's not necessarily right. We don't know. So we have a very good side. You know, we really understand things thanks to Large Hadron Collider through here. Uh, nuclear synthesis, we can actually see nature do that. So we get very certain here, and as we go back here, it becomes more and more yeah. uncertain. So reasonably certain, reasonably certain, reasonably certain, and somewhere around here, hazy, but at least some sort of clues we've heard about from Lawrence. Yep. And then when you go back here, we're really in the, we have no idea what's going on type of story. Yeah, that's right. But if you go to a linear scale, it's good we understand you know, everything except maybe the very bottom there. So I like the scale. Yeah. Well, I hope that makes things a bit clearer.